a bit of a philosophical question, but what's your intuition about why bigger is better in terms of network size and data size? Why does it lead to more intelligent models? So in my previous career as a, as a biophysicist, so I did physics undergrad and then biophysics in, 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 in grad school. So I think back to what I know as a physicist, which is actually much less than what some of my colleagues at, <laughs> at Anthropic have in terms of, in terms of expertise in physics. Uh, there's this there's this concept called the one over f noise and one over x distributions, um, where where often um, uh, you know just just like if you add up a bunch of natural processes you get a Gaussian. If you add up a bunch of kind of differently distributed natural processes, if you like if you like take a take a um, probe and and hook it up to a resistor, the distribution of the thermal noise in the resistor goes as one over the frequency. Um, it's some kind of natural convergent distribution. Uh, and, and, I, 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 and, and I think what it amounts to is that if you look at a lot of things that are, that are produced by some natural process that has a lot of different scales, right? Not a Gaussian, which is kind of narrowly distributed, but you know, if I look at kind of like large and small fluctuations that lead to lead to electrical noise. Um, they have this decaying one over X distribution. And so now I think of like patterns in the physical world, right? If I, if, I, or, or in language, if I think about the patterns in language, there are some really simple patterns. Some words are much more common than others, like the, then there's basic noun verb structure. Then there's the fact that, you know, nouns and verbs have to agree. They have to coordinate. And there's the higher level sentence structure. Then there's the thematic structure of paragraphs. And so the fact that there's this regressing structure, you can imagine that as you make the networks larger, first they capture the really simple correlations, the really simple patterns. And there's this long tail of other patterns. And if that long tail of other patterns is really smooth, like it is with the one over F noise in, you know, physical processes like, 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 like resistors, then you can imagine as you make the network larger, it's kind of capturing more and more of that distribution. And so that smoothness gets reflected in how well the models are at predicting and how well they perform. Language is an evolved process, right? We've, we've developed language. We have common words and less common words. We have common expressions and less common expressions. We have ideas, cliches that are expressed frequently, and we have novel ideas. And that process has, has developed, has evolved with humans over millions of years. And so the, the, the guess, and this is pure speculation, would be, would be that there is, there's some kind of long tail distribution of, of, of the distribution of these ideas. So there's the long tail, but also there's the height of the hierarchy of concepts that you're building up. So the bigger the network, presumably you have a higher capacity to... Exactly. If you have a small network, you only get the common stuff, right? If, if I take a tiny neural network, it's very good at understanding that, you know, a sentence has to have, you know, verb, adjective, noun, right? But it's, it's terrible at deciding what those verb, adjective, and noun should be and whether they should make sense. If I make it just a little bigger, it gets good at that. Then suddenly it's good at the sentences, but it's not good at the paragraphs. And so th these, these rarer and more complex patterns get picked up as I add, as I add more capacity to the network. Well, the natural question then is what's the ceiling of this? Yeah. Like how complicated and complex is the real world? How much is stuff is there to learn? I don't think any of us knows the answer to that question. Um, I, um, my strong instinct would be that there's no ceiling below the level of humans, right? We humans are able to understand these various patterns. And so that, that makes me think that if we continue to, you know, scale up these, these, these models to kind of develop new methods for training them and scaling them up, uh, that will at least get to the level that we've gotten to with humans. There's then a question of, you know, how much more is it possible to understand than humans do? How much, how much is it possible to be smarter and more perceptive than humans? I, I would guess the answer has, has got to be domain dependent. If I look at an area like biology, and, you know, I wrote this essay, Machines of Loving Grace, it seems to me that humans are struggling to understand the complexity of biology, right? If you go to Stanford or to Harvard or to Berkeley, you have whole departments of, you know, folks trying to study, you know, like the immune system or metabolic pathways. And, and each person understands only a tiny bit part of it, specializes, and they're struggling to combine their knowledge with that of, with that of other humans. And so I have an instinct that there's, there's a lot of room at the top for AIs to get smarter. 
if I think of something like materials in the in the physical world or, you know, um, like addressing, you know, conflicts between humans or something like that, I mean, you know, it, it may be there's only some of these problems are not intractable, but much harder. And and it, it may be that there's only there's only so well you can do at some of these things, right? Just like with speech recognition, there's only so clear I can hear your speech. So I think in some areas there may be ceilings in, in, in you know that are very close to what humans have done. In, in other areas, those ceilings may be very far away. And I think we'll only find out when we build these systems. Uh, there's it's very hard to know in advance. We can speculate, but we can't be sure. And in some domains, the ceiling might have to do with human bureaucracies and things like this, as you write about. Yes. So humans fundamentally have to be part of the loop. That's the cause of the ceiling, not maybe the limits of the intelligence. Yeah, I think in many cases, um, you know, in theory, technology could change very fast. For example, all the things that we might invent with respect to biology. Um, but remember, there's there's a you know there's a clinical trial system that we have to go through to actually administer these things to humans. I think that's a mixture of things that are unnecessary and bureaucratic, and things that kind of protect the integrity of society. And the whole challenge is that it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what's going on. Uh, it's hard to tell which is which. Right. My my view is definitely, I think. In terms of drug development, we my view is that we're too slow and we're too conservative. But certainly, if you get these things wrong, you know it's it's possible to 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 risk people's lives by by being by being by being too reckless. And so, at least at least some of these human institutions are in fact protecting people. So it's it's all about finding the balance. I strongly suspect that balance is kind of more on the side of pushing to make things happen faster. But there is a balance. 